Hello friends and fellow gamers, MKXJump here, and today I'm going to be talking about the brand new anniversary event here for Idle Heroes. Idle Heroes is now eight years old, very exciting, and this week we have an incredible event, but a lot of people are bashing on it, they don't think it's that good. Now, there's a few reasons why you might want to avoid certain things with this week's event, but the raw value that you're getting for free is is insane. You just need to make sure that you're approaching this event properly. There are a lot of potential traps and I can guarantee you a lot of free to play players are going to make mistakes this week if they get too carried away or if they approach this event incorrectly. So we'll be breaking all that stuff down for you and whether I think you should do certain things in this week's event and what you should probably skip. Before we do all that though, let me tell you about this week's sponsor. Angel Legion is a sci-fi idol RPG similar to Idol Heroes but set in space. You put together a team of angels combining their abilities into epic combos to explore the galaxy, defeat powerful foes, and when all that fighting is over you can hang out with your heroes in the cabin to relax and unwind. The heroes in this game are fully customizable and you can dress and change the way they look to your heart's content, and there's lots of different heroes in the game for you to experiment with to find which which team you like the most for making progress. Exclusive for this week, users on the Google servers can get themselves access to a unique fashion item as well as 10 free summons. Head over to your account settings and select the gift exchange button. Then from here, enter the code ZBHY6814. This will get you a free fashion item and 10 free summons. Head to your hero menu, unlock that fashion item, and equip it to whichever hero you like the most. So why not check out Angel Legion and claim those rewards for yourself on your account? The game's fully free to download, and you can find a link for the game in the description down below. Checking out that game helps out this channel, and who knows, it might just be your new favorite gacha game. Anyway folks, let's go ahead and check out this week's anniversary event for Idle Heroes. So, every day for logging in this week, you're going to be getting yourselves three heroic summon scrolls and 150 gems. You can put these gems to amazing use this week to get some incredible rewards, and these scrolls are worth saving to get big rewards in heroic summon events, just like this week. But is this week worth spending your scrolls on? Well, we'll be talking about that in a second. As well, you might notice you have some shiny memory rewards, and that's just additional rewards for having certain heroes unlocked on your account. You'll also notice a celebratory message from the developers of Idle Heroes, and DH Games have granted us a 5-star hero, 8 heroic summon scrolls, and 888 gems. On top of that, guys, if you go to cool events, you can redeem a brand new code, MKX2024, which is going to get you access to additional bonuses. And those rewards will get you a 5-star hero, 30 profit orbs, and 888 gems as well. Now, this week is the release of a brand new Transcendence hero. Alakita has a transcended form, Infinite Era Alakita. We'll be talking a little bit more about her towards the end of the video, but because we have a Transcendence event, it means that if you go to this Heroic Summon Circle, you are able to select any 5-star to be your reward hero this week. If you plan on using Heroic Summon Scrolls, I would select a rarer hero that you are wanting copies of. Maybe someone like Vulcan, or maybe it's like Carrie. Whatever hero you need that's difficult to get, select them and you can get them from your summons. If you aren't planning on using Heroic Summon Scrolls this week though, go to your hero bag, look in your shards, and find a hero you have a lot of copies of. So for example, you can see I'm sitting on quite a large number of, let's say, for example, Jara here. I have 15 copies of her. Let's say if I chose her to be my up hero, well, I can actually go to the hero lottery, which will reward me for every time I get a copy of that hero. I'll get four star armor. So if I summoned all 15 copies of Jara, that would get me 15 lots of four star armor, which I can then use in the almost workshop for added rewards. Another thing to use the up hero for is the Palace of Eternity. This lets you swap any of the five recently released heroes into a copy of the hero you want. So let's say you've got some gaggy copies on your account and you want to swap them, or maybe you've got some Lunas that you're not planning on using, you can swap them to whatever hero you select to be your up hero. That switch will cost you 10 Eternity Crystals, and you can get Eternity Crystals from the Palace of Crystal. You get five for every 400 Heroic Summon Scrolls you do, and if you buy the value package up here for 100 bucks, you will get a key that will get you an additional 50. 
15 each time you buy that key for that corresponding level. There are five keys in total, so it will actually cost you 500 bucks in relative value to get all of this. So you probably don't want to get all of that, but for some people, Eternity Crystals can be quite useful. Now, these top packages aren't just getting you palace keys, they're getting you good luck coins, they're getting you 8th anniversary treasure coupons, which you can use for limited treasure train rewards, and we also get 280 heroic summon scrolls and 10,000 gems. This scales down depending on how much you're willing to spend, but do bear in mind only the 150 bucks packages are getting you these good luck coins. Also, they have equivalent packages available for contract story gems, which is useful to bear in mind. Now, if we move and look at the summon prizes, this is going to get you your usual profit orbs and heroic summon scrolls, and you gain points for every heroic summon scroll you use. You can do this all the way up to 500 points, and you can do that four times in total for a total of 2,000 heroic summon scrolls used. 200 points is going to get you additional scrolls, profit orbs, and a copy of Natalia, which is pretty cool. And if you get to 300, you're getting yourself five soul symbols, a core of transcendence, and for 400, you're also getting yourself a copy of the hero you selected in the heroic summons. As well, for 500 points, you're going to get another core of transcendence, 15 glorious relics, and you're getting four treasure coupons thrown in with that. As well, you'll notice these lucky coins, and there's a total of 10 of them for every 500 scrolls you use, meaning you can get up to 40 just from using scrolls. Now, you're probably wondering what those coins are used for. Well, the answer is the bigger part of this event, the Digital Claw Machine. More on that later. First, we must look at the Heroic Exchange event, which is letting you get up any of these heroes we've recently had. So there's Natalie, there's Betty, we've got Gaggy, we've got Yorm Tom, we've got Patricia and Luna. All of these are available for 5,000 and 4,000 Altar Stones, respectively. In my opinion, the best grabs here are Natalie and Betty for 4,000 each. However, maybe you want to get a copy of Gaggy or even one of these other heroes, as these are also swappable in the Palace of Eternity. Now, the main part for Anniversary is the Neon Knight Fantasy, and this is where the controversy begins. Even though we have a brand new Transcendence hero, DH Games decided not to give us a proper Transcendence event. So the normal spend 800 bucks, summon five stars and awaken heroes levels of rewards, which you can find events for in my archives here on YouTube, where we've covered previous Transcendence hero releases in the past. Well, they haven't given us any of that. Instead, they've given us the usual eight tier reward system, where for the first four rewards, you're getting just stuff like sublimation or stellar shards and there's origin shards chests here as well, but it's only when you get deeper do you actually get rewards like destiny materials. So you already have to do half of the event before you can access destiny stuff. This is a little unfortunate, and of course that first level of reward is only an artifact. That means it's difficult to access this event because the first tier of rewards only get you an artifact, making the investment hard to justify. That said, you'd like something that was easy to access for that first tier, meaning we only have to invest deep for the second tier. However, to get this first stage of reward, you need to get a quantum toy. However, if you look at this particular part of the event, there are three kinds of toys. Digital toys, limited toys, and quantum toys. And unfortunately, quantum toys are the rarest. You have this conveyor belt with these toys moving along, and you want to insert your coin and move the claw down to grab the toy you want. In the first stage, though, there's only digital toys, and you have to grab all of them before you move to the next stage, which only contains one limited toy. So to even get to a quantum toy, you need to have used 20 coins already. Then there's a catch with the final stage. Even though you could, in theory, use the claw to grab the quantum toy first time, there's actually a 90% chance for it to escape from the claw, and you instead grab a different toy. This is really annoying as it means no matter what you try to do, the chance that you get a quantum toy is limited unless there's nothing left and therefore it's more likely that you have to do 30 coins to get this quantum toy. In addition, you then have to clear the rest of the floor before you can even move on to the next stage. So even if you do high roll and the quantum toy doesn't fall off the claw, you still have to continue with the rest of that level before you can move on to additional rewards, meaning that that high roll is theoretically wasted. So basically, the best way to think about this then is that each reward tier requires you to use 30 coins. 
Now, if we remember, 30 coins is 1,500 heroic summon scrolls, and in my opinion, spending 1,500 scrolls to pick up a mysterious artifact is not worth it. I don't care if we get these replacement coupons, I don't care about these skin shards, and a treasure train item is not enough to justify this. We will take a look at these new treasure train items later on in the video, and we'll also be looking at how to use these shards a little sooner as well, but the main reward here is an artifact, and for me, that is just not worth 1500 scrolls. So is there another way that we can get coins? Well, the answer is technically yes. It comes from the machine rampage. This allows you to use bombs to clear away these Alakita toys. However, even though there are lots of Transcendence Alakitas floating around here, the odds of actually pulling one is only 1.9% with these common bombs, and each of these common bombs cost 100 gems each. However, on your 30th attempt, if you fail to get a Transcendence Alakita, you will get one automatically. So at least there's a pity system in place to reward you in case you fail. So what are these Transcendence Alakitas for then? Well, they allow you to get additional bonuses. For every six Transcendence Alakita dolls you get, you'll get good luck coins and you'll get six data chips. If you get a total of 12, you get 10 more good luck coins and six more data chips. And again, for 18, it's the same, which means to get another 30 of these good luck coins, you need to get yourself 18 Transcendence Alakita dolls. Now, if we bear in mind we're getting them on a pity timer of 30, then realistically, when you use these bombs, you actually are probably going to have to use all 400 to be in with a chance because of course if you high roll a transcendence doll that timer will reset so you will keep that advantage that you've gained if it was only pities you'd be getting 13 transcendence dolls but because there is a chance to high roll one it's probably likely you're able to pick up all 18 in 400 however 400 bombs is going to cost you 40,000 gems and that is excruciatingly expensive and in my opinion absolutely not worth it because if we remember 30 of these coins is equivalent value to just an artifact and there is no way in 2024 do i think it is a good idea to spend 40,000 gems on an artifact chest there is one saving grace and that's the auspicious lucky cat is now available in these chests because dh games have released a new artifact to the game as well which we'll talk about later in the video as well but still, that doesn't change the fact that I think 40,000 is just a little too much. Also, if you low roll, you'll then have to use contract starry gems to make up for that. And every Transcendence doll is going to cost you 300 contract starry gems. And that could add up really quickly and actually really eat into your contract starry gem total. So just be mindful that even if you do choose to go after this, there is a chance you low roll and you'll have to use your contract starry gems. So far then, it's not looking good for this event. And that's that's why a lot of people are upset but you need to approach this event intelligently to get the most out of it if you just look at these first two sections and go well these coins don't seem worth it and this seems too expensive then that negativity is probably going to put you in a trap if you look at this next section, this is the Night Radio Fantasy. And what you have here is Alakita yapping away on this chat screen. But one thing she says here is really important. Highlighted here, it says eight years. You need to go into the cool events and type that specific phrase as a code. And that will reward you with additional heroic summon scrolls. You get 100 for doing that. And every day she's going to say something different. So it's important that you go in here and read each code as it comes because as they progressively come in you're going to get more and more heroic summon scrolls for a total of 800 scrolls and typically during a normal transcendence event 800 scrolls are enough to get you a essence sublimation chest that basically means this event is giving you an essence sublimation chest for free you just need to make sure that you save these scrolls for an event like that the next Transcendence event that's due to be a normal Transcendence event is going to be in August, at the end of summer. Then we're going to have the Halloween event, and hopefully that's going to be the same. And then after that, we have Christmas. Each of these events will have a chance for us to cash in 800 scrolls to get a sublimation chest, and that is extremely valuable. So the way this week is going to work is you are going to want to save these free rewards for use in future events to pay you dividends down the line. Line. It's not about going in on this specific part of the event. It's actually best if you invest in future events and use what you get here for free to allow you to do that. 
think of this as a preparation event for bigger stuff coming later in the year. Anniversary is handing us tons of free rewards, and that does not change when it comes to the overrun analyzing part of this event. This is an opportunity to pick up an incredible amount of rewards. First of all, you're getting six data chips just for logging in every day. On top of that, you can buy up to 50 and you should totally do this. This is 25,000 gems and this is why we've told you to save your gems for anniversary. Buying this will allow you to start to analyze lines of code and for every successful line that you get, you will get a bonus reward. If you get one successful line, you'll get yourself a five-star hero or three heroic summon scrolls. If you get two successful lines, you will get yourself a random one of these rewards you see here. If you get three successful lines, there's a chance for things like Master's Toolboxes, Celestial Island Resources, heck, there's even Profit Orbs and Glorious Relics. And up here, if you get four lines of successful code, you will get yourself Contract Story Gems, maybe Cause of Transcendence, there's even Sublimation Materials in here, and you can even get Core of Origin Shards. That is a lot of potential rewards you could pick up. I love that there's Stellar. There's even Scattered Spirit Vein Shards here, so you can use that to help improve your Destiny here. All of this is going to get even more valuable when you realize there's going to be a lucky binary code that is released each day. That binary code will correspond with one of these top rewards. And if that code comes out and matches your top reward, you don't just get what you see pictured. No, if, for example, I got three cores of transcendence and my code came out, I would triple that benefit, meaning I would get an additional nine cores of transcendence on top of what I already had. That is absolutely fantastic. And if you look, you can improve that multiplier even more. If you get yourself 30 of those top rewards, it's going to go to times four. Heck, if you just get 15, it's going to get you one of these treasure train rewards and a C minus stone. If you keep going, you can see the multiplier increases and there's more stones here for awakens and of course, more treasure train items. So the more of these successful deciphers you do, the better the rewards in total and the higher the multiplier, meaning you can pick up an absolutely astronomical amount of rewards. And we have seen time and time again, players getting themselves ridiculous amounts of stellar shards, crystals, cores, contract star gems all from events like this and this is easily one of the best value things that you can invest your gems in so definitely spend 25,000 gems if you can to get this furthermore for every four dollars you spend in this week's event you will get yourself an additional data chip so you're being given additional bonuses for spending and that is the way that you're going to push yourself to these higher levels of rewards also if you analyze the code 10 times and don't get four successful runs back to back you will be given a perfect run after 10 attempts that pity timer also resets when you get a perfect run as well meaning that if you high roll the pity resets and also it stays if you don't so you're always accumulating good value from this so there's a very very strong chance that you're going to get yourself a lot of these top level rewards if you invest in this. So overall, whether you're a spender or free to play, it is definitely worth going after this event. Next, we have the series collection, and this is where you can use this anniversary's festival coupons to get yourself brand new festival treasures, which we'll be taking a look. There's also the chest here that contains any festival treasure that has been released for 2024. The ways you obtain these coupons is by spending money. Every $6 will get you an additional one, but you'll also see across many things in this week's event, there are additional ways to get coupons, whether it's from summons, buying packages, or all sorts of things. You are definitely going to be able to get some of these. Now, if you don't plan on spending and you don't want to get to 30 here for one of these items, then another option you can do is wait until the end of the week and go to the convert, where you can convert any of these treasure coupons for something else. So if you've picked up a ton of them in the past, you can just convert them to normal treasure coupons, which will be extremely useful for you in the future. Especially considering in one month's time, Hero Token is going to have an increased drop rate. And Hero Token is considered by many to be the best best investment for your treasure train tickets, as it gives massive bonuses to your fixed attack and fixed HP. Now, whilst we're here in the treasure train, it's probably best we look at these new festival items. And you can see the devs have decided to troll us with this pink artifact. This is giving us a buff to rangers, assassins, and priests, and that is a buff to control immunity offset. 
That is hilarious because really it's mages that need control immunity offset because Betty is the main control hero in the game and any opportunity for her to improve her ability to remove control immunity is fantastic. It's extremely unfortunate then that they didn't add mage to this list, which makes this significantly less valuable than it could have been. Also, these fixed stats aren't that great. If we move on to the next item, the old fashioned rotary phone dial, this is giving all damage reduction to mages. It's a cute bonus, but not 100% necessary. And finally, we have the vintage large format camera, which is giving you an all damage dealt bonus to warriors. So that's nice for heroes like Vulcan, Mockman, or Aspen. But unfortunately, the upgraded bonus is only 5%. So it's not a huge bonus for you to enjoy. 5% is actually very small in the grand scheme of all damage bonuses you're getting. But for many min maxers, this will still be something they want to get their hands on. So these treasures are by no means compulsory, but if you do manage to pick up some of them, it will be nice to have some extra damage for your warriors and some additional defense for your mages. And maybe you do have a ranger, assassin, or priest that can crowd control, and that would make it potentially quite useful to get the pink one as well. Moving on with many of the anniversary rewards here, we also have a replacement, which allows you to swap many of the things here in the game. So first of all, we can swap mysterious artifacts. You can either go from a normal mysterious artifact like this magic stone sword to a different one, and that's going to cost you 320 of these replacement coupons. Remember that you can pick these up from the event, or you can just buy them for gems, but that can get very expensive, so be careful. If, however, you wanted to swap a normal artifact to a mysterious artifact, that's going to cost you 1,000. And just so you know, 1,000 of these tickets is 50,000 gems. That is not worth it. Don't do this. This is, this is crazy. No, bad. That's outrageously poor value. Please don't do that. Next, you can swap flags. So if you have a flag sitting around and you want to change its faction, that's going to cost you 240 of the swaps. We have skins where you can swap festival skins. This is going to be extremely useful. So let's say you've got a skin like my Arania one here. And let's say you wanted to get the skin for Alomac. You can swap one festival skin to another festival skin, and that will cost you 120. This is extremely useful if you have festival skins on your account that you don't use, as festival skins are extremely limited and difficult to get for most players. If that skin is legendary though, like my Mockman skin, that swap will cost a little bit more. Heroes are the next thing that you can swap, and this is really interesting. It specifically says that only heroes whose initial star level is 5 star can be replaced. So normally you'd expect someone like this Kamath, for example, to be able to be swapped, and if it's a hero that isn't light and dark, you cannot swap them to light and dark heroes. But let's say I wanted to swap this Kamath to an Eloise. That would cost me 50 replacement coupons. However, there's one weird glitch about this, and I think it's definitely worth capitalizing on if you can. Heroes that can be made to 6 star can be swapped, but that's still true for heroes that have a 4 star form. That means heroes like Dark Spirit and Divine Spirit who traditionally you cannot even regress with soul symbols. L let me show you right now for this Divine Spirit. There's only a button for Awaken. There is no button for Convert. That means Divine Spirit and Dark Spirit, if you take them beyond 6-star, are trapped on your account unless you use them as food. And that is devastating. It is a huge mistake I see people make, and it means that you waste light and dark food by feeding it away. However, for one reason or another, if you take Divine Spirit or Dark Spirit to 6-star, you can now swap them. And it gets crazy. I could swap them into anybody I like in the Light and Dark faction. That means I can turn a Divine Spirit into a carry copy. That is bonkersly useful and incredibly good value, and it would cost you 50 per copy. So a Divine Spirit 6-star is two copies of a 5-star, so that would cost me 5,000 gems to do. So if you're looking for an easy way to get difficult Light and Darks on your account, this is definitely one way to do it. And another cool thing is we're swapping a light hero to a dark hero. So if you have tons of light hero food, you could go and get someone like my 9-star Michelle, and you could swap that instead. And because a 9-star has only three copies, well, I could easily just go and spend 150 for this. But what this also does is this turns 
all of the light heroes used as food in this Michelle into dark heroes. So if you're leaning towards someone like Lord of Fear Aspen, where you need a lot of dark food to have Aspen as a tenant, and maybe you'll also need to have an Onkiramaru or an Amon Ra as a tenant, and then you're also going to need to have Carrie maybe for support, and you want to get a Drake in there too for defense down, and maybe you want to build a copy of the new hero, you're going to need a Transcendence Elena, there's all sorts of dark heroes you'll need, then maybe you've got a lot of light heroes sitting around not doing anything. In that case, you could turn a 9-star light hero into a 9-star dark hero, transferring all that food from one faction to another. And that can be extremely useful. Just be warned if you do plan on doing that, though, it will make life difficult for you if you try to switch to Vulcan in the future, because Vulcan needs a lot of light heroes. So bear that in mind if you decide to make that transition, because Vulcan is very light intensive, as he himself is a light hero, and he also needs Natalia as a tenant, along with a few other light heroes as tenants as well. But hopefully you can take use out of this, especially the fact that you're now able to swap really rubbish heroes like Dark and Divine Spirit, but only if you make them six star. Another part of the swaps this week is orange artifact swaps. So if you've ever opened one of these orange artifact chests that I have here on my account, and let's say you chose the Grimoire, but you actually decided you wanted the exotic pistol, then you can easily make that switch here as well. And that's going to cost you 320 more of these tickets, which is a total of 16,000 gems. And finally, you can swap deific mysterious artifacts. So let's say I wanted to swap my Breath of Forest Spirit into the Dragon Rui scepter. However, that is excruciatingly expensive because it's going to cost me 640 swap tickets per artifact used to make this. So you would need a total of 2,560 swaps to turn a forest spirit into a dragon Rui. And heck, I can't even afford that on my account. I don't even know where the heck you would get 2,560 of these from. So if you did get an origin artifact and you're not happy about it, the chance to change it is here, but do bear in mind that mistake is going to be extremely expensive to fix. And of course, the elephant in the room, there is no option for swapping cores. Many people liked it, but DH Games have gone on the record saying that they'll probably not add a ability to swap cores anytime soon. So unfortunately, guys, we go another year without that feature. But there's no point getting upset about that because the chances of it happening were very slim anyway. As we move on, you'll see you can get yourself some additional minor rewards, and that's just for having previous copies of heroes attained on your account from previous anniversaries. And you can get yourself some heroes like Patricia and Eos and Holmes Young all thrown in here as rewards. And there's also the memory echoing, which is a way that you can pick up festival skins. So this is where those skin shard fragments will go to use here, and you can buy more of them for 100 gems each. This is a nice way to get yourself a festival skin for Betty, or maybe you want a skin here for Patricia or Natalia. All of this is available and you can go ahead and grab whichever skin you like. This is one of the few ways that free-to-play players can get festival skins, so if you're after these items, this is something for you. Now moving on to something here for spenders, we have an anniversary relay package, which allows you to spend various degrees of rewards to get things like gems, heroic summon scrolls, you also get some data chips, and also remember every four bucks you spend will get you an additional data chip as well. And you'll see these rewards progressively increase in line with what we normally expect from relays, but then things get really weird at the $50 pack. There's an additional free bonus afterwards, which means you are getting a heck of a lot of Stellar Shards for that, an additional Cause of Transcendence thrown in there too, with more data chips and another couple good luck coins. But then we get an additional extended end to the relay, meaning it will actually come to a grand total of over 260 bucks. It's a little too expensive for my liking, but still, you'll see that you can get yourself some gems, you can get some additional coupons, there's more data chips in here, and there's more good luck coins. But it seems the value here is a little questionable, as all you're really getting is a half a sublimation chest and some additional small treasure coupon bonuses. And I don't think that's necessarily worth it for 70 bucks. The heck, you're not even getting that many coins here, it's only 12, not the 30 needed to unlock another stage. On top of that, the final level for 100 bucks is giving you 20 more of these coins, 30 more data chips, it's giving you 30 coupons, and then you get an artifact chest that contains the brand new artifact Shark Cannon Shell. 
This is a crit, crit damage speed artifact. I'll talk a little more on this later on, but honestly, I don't think that artifact is that good, and it's definitely not worth spending a hundred bucks on. It's just the usual, hey, this is a new thing, we're going to make it exclusive and expensive. And in my opinion, the value of these last few stages in the relay are extremely overpriced and very, very unattractive. So the most I would ever consider going is up to justice and energy here, as you are getting a substantial number of stellar shards, and the investment here is 100 bucks, as opposed to an additional 70 and 100 for actually not that much more. The catch, however, is you actually need to buy this entire relay if you plan on completing this entire event. And the really annoying thing is Destiny rewards are only given from stage 5 onwards. And I'll talk how to get to these different stages in a second if you're looking for the most money efficient way to go in on this week's event. But before we look at that, we have ourselves some additional things that you can pick up this week. We have these Neon Gem Cards, Starry Gem Cards, and Anniversary Celebration Cards. And each of these will give you rewards for 15 days in a row. So the Neon Gem Card is going to reward you with a lot of Celestial Island resources, which in my opinion is absolutely fantastic and definitely worth the 5,000 gems. And it gets better and better value the higher the level you are. But even accounts as small as level 100 will still still get incredible value from this. The Neon Starry Gem card is a little different, this is going to get you a lot of sublimation passives, and if this was something you were wanting, you can probably pick up a decent amount of rewards here, but the grand total is not going to be extremely high, as the multiplier is only 8. So it's not tons, and you could probably leave this and not really miss it too much on your account, but that still does cost you 888 contract starry gems and finally the ain't celebration card this is kind of good as it's 15 bucks and is getting you 2700 contract starry gems in total but i think this is actually the best value for people who are budget players people who don't have access to that many masters toolboxes and are severely in need of it for the celestial island as you will get 18 masters toolboxes every single day and that can be the difference between quite a good number of levels in the celestial island so if you were looking for master's toolboxes and you still wanted to get good contract story gem value, 15 bucks for this is not terrible at all. However, if you're someone with way too many master's toolboxes, I think the value of this wanes a little bit. We carry on with yet more of this event, it just keeps on coming, and we have now, because it's a transcendence event, a chance to get rewards if you awaken copies of Alakita. I'll say straight up for the record, I don't think this is good value because they didn't give us a Transcendence event. Therefore, we're not being rewarded for Awakening Heroes, and this was a huge oversight from DH Games, and therefore I don't think many people are actually going to awaken Alakita copies today. Either way, you do get points for each Alakita you awaken, and those points will accumulate up to 60, where you will get yourself finally an artifact as a reward and this now contains Auspicious Lucky Cat. I would have really liked to see a Transcendence event alongside this to make Awakening more valuable, and because that's not been added, I personally am going to be refraining from Awakening any heroes this week. I think that's really unfortunate and a huge missed opportunity by DH Games. Next, you'll get yourself some additional rewards if you enter a fight with the new Transcended version of Alakita, Infinite Era, and you put her in fights with some of the newer Transcendence heroes. The most important one here is Alakita against Luna, where you'll get five cores of Transcendence. You can do this by fighting someone on your friends list who has all of these Transcendence heroes, and that will automatically get you all of these rewards, apart from the lower ones that require you personally to have all of these heroes involved and a copy of Alakita for yourself. Fortunately for you, we have plenty of people in the community, including my moderator team, who are setting up accounts that you can add as a friend and attack to get yourself all of these rewards. So all you need to do is join my Discord, which you can find a link for in the description, to get yourself into the community where you can find someone who can help you get these rewards. And finally, the last part of this event is just a little log where you can see how much progress you have made on your account so far, and you'll also get yourself some heroic summon scrolls for doing that. And you can also click this button to join the Idle Heroes community to stay involved with Idle Heroes and DH Games through social media. So there it is, folks. That is an absolutely astronomically large event, and you're probably wondering what different things I would recommend. If you're free to play, I think the best thing you can do is spend your gems here on the overanalyzing to get as many of these data chips as possible and use that to get yourself a ton of these top rewards. I think the digital claw machine is poor value and I think it's badly placed with an artifact as the minimum reward at the start. 
unlike other events we've seen, which allow you to get sublimations immediately as your top reward. Therefore, the value for using scrolls this week is significantly lower than other Transcendence events. I couldn't tell you why DH Games have done that, but we do have the added bonus of an additional 800 scrolls this week. So in my opinion, it's worth saving your scrolls and just using your gems for rewards this week. Your scrolls can be used in later big events coming up, like at the end of August we have the Shishi event, we have Halloween, we have Black Friday, we have Christmas and Chinese New Year. All huge events in the next six months which will require your scrolls, and therefore it's a really good thing that you're picking up these scrolls for free, because it's going to set your accounts up nicely if you're a free-to-play player for the future events to come. This is brilliant if you're smart with these scrolls and save them now. If you use them, however, that's going to cripple your account and mean you miss out on huge rewards in the future. If, however, you're a spender looking to get some value out of this week, I think a really good option for you guys is to spend on the relay up to 100 bucks. First of all, this is going to get you a million stellar shards, along with plenty of cores of transcendence, so tons of value for stellar shards here. And that 100 bucks is also going to pick you up 18 of these good luck coins. If you go to the cool events and go to the value packages, I would then consume 5,000 contract starry gems, which will get you an additional 32 good luck coins. That will give you a total of 50. Then, if you go to your summon prizes and you do 2,000 heroic summon scrolls, that will get you an additional 40, taking you up to a total of 90 coins. Those 90 coins will be enough to get you the first three stages of rewards here, meaning you can get yourself an artifact, you can get yourself maybe either stellar shards or some sublimation, and for the third tier of rewards you can go with a core of origin chest or maybe a million crystals of transcendence. And you could also consider spending another 40,000 gems on these bombs to get yourself 18 of these transcendence Alakita dolls, which will get you additional data chips and of course 30 more good luck coins. That will then get you the fourth tier of rewards where you can pick up an origin artifact selection chest, or maybe you'll want to get yourself stellar shards or essence sublimation or whatever takes your fancy that's available on this level. In fact, this is a massive improvement to the tier four rewards, and I hope we see this more more often in events moving forwards. That means that by using 5,000 contract story gems, 2,000 heroic summon scrolls, and 100 books on the relay, you will get yourself the first four tiers of rewards. To max this week's event, you will need to spend over $700. That means these final four stages and the additional bonus here at the end, which all together is giving you 10 lots of destiny materials, plus these additional bonuses here, like an origin artifact selection chest, 1 million stellar shards, 1 million crystals, and 30 anniversary treasure coupons, that entire batch of rewards is going to cost you an additional $600. And that, my friends, is extraordinarily expensive. For many spenders, this will be extremely attractive, as it is picking you up additional swap items and things that can help you make progress throughout the game and help you get one step closer to having a Nirvana hero on your account, which is the highest level of Destiny Hero. In addition, there's a new chest here, which is giving an item we haven't seen before. These new items are called Star Souls and are used to enhance heroes when they've maxed their Destiny abilities. That means these are completely out of reach for the majority of players, and you probably do not need to worry too much about these yet, but for those very small number of people, I think it's like only 50 players on Android that do have have access to Nirvana heroes, then finally this is how you are going to get yourself the added enhancements beyond that level. There's even the Star Soul upgrade materials here that you will need to level up those things, which get extremely expensive as well, and this added power creep is all here to allow you to get that. Now for a lot of you this is just confusing and alien, and you don't need to worry about it. The thing that matters most is if you haven't reached that level of reward yet, it's probably just more important that you get yourself some destiny materials so that you can reach Nirvana in the first place. And I promise you, it is a heck of a lot of destiny materials. So if all these extra chests confuse you, all you need to know is do not grab these because you will get no use out of them at all until you have finally got yourself destiny heroes upgraded to their maximum level and i can promise you you're going to need to be playing the game for a long time and spend a lot of money before you reach that point point. and you know what that means guys it means you don't even have to think about it because for the majority of people it's never gonna happen 
So the options are clear for this digital claw machine. Either save your scrolls and don't worry about it at all, probably spend a hundred bucks on the relay and maybe just do the first four stages by using contract story gems and 2000 scrolls to push you ahead, or if you're feeling absolutely ridiculous, spend over $700 by every single package that contains coins, and then probably be sad about the fact you've just spent an awful lot of money. But at least you're going to get yourself a ton of treasure coupons for doing that, and the amount of rewards you will pick up are significantly substantial, and for many people that are later big whales in the game they may be attracted to making that level of investment but for the majority of players dropping 700 bucks on a single event is absolutely insane behavior and something you will never ever dream of doing even within a year of playing this game let alone one week for many skipping the heroic summon scrolls portion of this week is a bad thing. But in my personal opinion, we just know that there are better things to use your scrolls on. And the fact that we're being given 800 of them for free is absolutely incredible for free to play players, because I rest assure you there will be significantly better uses of your heroic summon scrolls in the future, and you will be able to spend them very rapidly in the future events that come. That means you won't have to skip many scroll events coming in the future because you'll have this massive surplus carrying on over from anniversary. I know a lot of you that will be entering this event with maybe only 300 or 400 scrolls, and this big 800 scroll boost is just gonna set you up amazingly for the rest of the year. So just claim them, get what you can with gems, and call this event done because the rewards here are fantastic and they're just going to set you up in the future. You don't need to worry about the sublimation chests and the artifacts that you could get because the investment is just too high to justify picking those things up. Next week, we're getting an Imp's Adventure with an extra drop carnival and shelter mission. The heroes advertised in the shelter mission are Sarja, Azrael, Siahu, and Arania. And for light and dark, there is Forkis and Eos. More on this event next week. And if you want to stay up to date with all the idle heroes events as they come, join me here every Friday and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. But before we move on, I'd like to speak quickly about the new Transcendence hero, Alakita. Her skills are really, really cool, and to summarize her, she has the ability to swap the way buffs work. She turns attribute buffs into attribute debuffs, and she can turn the debuffs you've received into buffs for your team. This is really cool. It's an Uno reverse style effect, and a lot of her skills are relatively simple to read, and she even has a death passive. Also, when you go ahead and look, you don't need too much investment to get a lot of value out of her. This makes Infinite Era Alakita a really free-to-play friendly support hero who can do well on your account with minimal investment, meaning you can focus your stellar shards and sublimation on the heroes that matter to you, whether it's a Vulcan or an Aspen, maybe you want to make your Elena or your Halora stronger. Well, you can do that and improve their Tree of Origin by using your stellar shards, and Alakita does doesn't even need to be Void 4 to do well, as her death passive is just fantastic as it is. Maybe you can upgrade her to Void 3 to enhance it, and that doesn't even cost you 3 million stellar shards to do that. Therefore, Infinite Era Alakita is a fantastic support hero for people who do not have that many stellar shards, but are looking for a new Transcendence hero on their account. Many people end up spreading their resources thin when they have too many Transcendence heroes and not enough stellar shards, but Infinite Era Alakita fixes that problem by being a hero that does not need much to do well. So if you're in that situation where the best you can do is build a Void 3 of your next Transcendence hero, consider Alakita, because her passives and ability to Uno reverse negative and positive effects is absolutely phenomenal. What I'm really scared of is fighting her ourselves, as she will turn all the buffs that we give our heroes into debuffs, and that will make her a terrifying enemy in PvE. But if you use her yourself, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. And I'm really excited to see what creative solutions and teams people come up with using Infinite Era Alakita. And before I leave you folks, let's talk quickly about this brand new artifact that's been released. It's called the Shark Cannon Shell, and it's basically a crit, crit damage and speed artifact that has the ability to improve the damage of your heroes. It's not that great, and it spends the buffs it gives you, and they're a little slow to be applied. They need basic attacks to be added to your hero, and it's not an energy artifact, meaning it's counter synergistic with energy feed because it's not going to help that strategy, and also it needs 
need you to be reliant on basic attacks, which means if you do have an energy feed team, a lot of its procs aren't going to trigger. When you upgrade it to its deific form, you do gain some cool abilities like dynamite armor and reflective armor, which are abilities normally exclusive to a hero called Penny in the Fortress faction. These abilities can be really annoying as they prevent control and are able to reflect damage you take back to the opponent, but this is probably not going to be that powerful. It might find some weird use in PvP, but personally I don't think this is going to be a useful artifact moving forward. There may be some weird cases where this artifact might have a use, but generally it's just a weaker version of melodic strings. The speed, crit and crit damage would have been fantastic a few years ago in Idle Heroes, but we don't really have a place for an artifact like this anymore. And there are better damage increasing artifacts that already exist, such as Auspicious Lucky Cat, and of course Antler's Cane. Both of these artifacts are far more substantial at what they do, and I prefer them significantly to the Shark Cannon Shell. So one nice thing then is there is a new artifact in the game that doesn't seem that exciting, or at least not for any hero that's been added to the game yet, and therefore we can now buy Auspicious Lucky Cat from the shop. So as one artifact enters that doesn't excite me, a new one is added to free-to-play accessible game modes, and that is a good thing. So folks, let me know what you're most excited about this week, and I strongly implore you to save your scrolls if you're a free-to-play player, because this massive bonus of scrolls is something you shouldn't waste as an opportunity, as it will significantly help you in future events to come. Let me know what rewards you managed to pick up this week, and good luck with your overrun analyzing, and hopefully you'll get yourself some really good rewards from the multipliers. As well, why not consider checking out our sponsor, Angel Legion? Their game is fully free to play, and it might be the new big gacha game you're looking for. You can find downloadable links and codes in the description of this video. Either way, I'll see you next time. For more Idle Heroes updates, hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, have a fantastic week. Happy idling and happy anniversary.